Hello, this is Matt from TracyMatt.co.uk and here we are looking at the CAT B15, which is a ruggedized smartphone. Um, we've looked at ruggedized devices in the past, which uh, uh, none of them have been particularly exciting. And this one's got a bit of a action already by the looks of it. But um, none of the previous sort of ruggedized devices from uh, JCB um, have been particularly interesting. They've been really basic devices, basic phones. Uh, nothing too exciting in the smartphone department. So, just have a quick look. We have the getting started and uh, manual here, which interestingly is shaped like the phone, which perhaps isn't such a bad idea really, because if you've got loads of manuals lying around, uh, you're not sure which one uh, it's for. What not? What uh, a bad idea. Have that like that. Battery here, which is a 2,000 milliamp hour battery. We then have a USB cable, which is a micro USB to USB sync and charge cable. A wired headset, fairly basic, with four pole three and a half mil jack, inline microphone with a just a simple push button and in-ear style headphones. We then have uh, a set of additional covers, replacement covers for those rubber bits over there. We'll talk about that in a moment, but that's a, uh, a replacement set, a set of spares. And then a UK charger, which is UK 3 pin with a USB socket just on the top. So pushing those aside for a moment, we have the phone here itself. So as you can see, clipped off corners, fairly sort of typical touch screen smartphone arrangement, but you'll notice how thick and chunky it is. Maybe looking like um, an iPhone 4 with an unusual case. Uh, and I suspect that perhaps uh, people will believe that's exactly what uh, you have here. Uh, so on the front we have forward-facing basic camera, which uh, is, um, I think it's just VJ resolution. And to be honest with you, the specification that we've received from uh, CAT on this one uh, are a little bit sparse, to be honest with you. But uh, we have a forward-facing camera nevertheless. We then have a 4 inch capacitive touchscreen display. Uh, the 4 inch display is 480 by 800 pixels so by no means a high resolution display. Um, somewhat, um, I guess there are going to be compromises with this device. I mean it is an IP67 device so it's waterproof down to uh, a depth of 1 meter for 30 minutes and also dust and shock proof and obviously ruggedized around all of the outside. But uh, 480 by 800 pixels, I mean it's okay. Um, it's not the worst by any means, um, but uh, obviously a lot of other smartphones have moved on quite dramatically from there. Underneath that with menu home and back buttons, and obviously around all around the outside you have this really tough uh, shell. It's all very rubberized around the outside. On the, that's interesting. On the left hand side we have a rubber cover over the micro USB sync charge connector. So that's one of the things we've already mentioned. That does have a spare in the bag and the box that came with it. Uh, nothing to see on the bottom at all. Um, I guess that's the little microphone there rather than being right on the bottom edge. On the right hand side, up and down volume controls and the push button in the center, possibly as a camera button um, or a menu button or something like that. On the top, the power button. Again, that's all kind of rubberized and sealed uh, power button and then a cover again over the uh, headphone jack, four pole headphone jack for a wired headset or indeed headphones with the uh, three and a half mil jacks and that again has a spare in the box. Back cover then uh, comes open like so. It has a grommet all the way around the edge here, a rubber seal to keep that uh, all watertight and the back cover actually does lock in place. Space for the SIM card here and the micro, S, uh, micro SD memory card uh, to the side as well. Let me pop the battery in. Goes that way around. That cover goes back on, like so. It does kind of snap in place and then it locks at the bottom. There we go. And that's kind of all in place there. Power up, there we go. Uh, run down the rest of the specification. In terms of size, 125 millimeters from top to bottom, just under 70 millimeters wide. It's quite chunky, 
at um, almost 15 millimeters thick. It's uh, 14.95. Weighty as well, 170 grams, but that's because of all the protection and stuff that you've got around it, basically. Uh, the camera on the back is a 4 megapixel autofocus. Uh, okay, it's warning me that there's not a lot of power, so let's just plug in some power while we're finish talking about it. Uh, and one thing that is noticeable is um, the distance between the actual uh, LCD screen and the front glass, presumably to provide additional protection, um, but it is quite noticeable. Uh, in terms of that gap, there's uh, a fairly sort of uh, noticeable air gap between the two, um, which might actually cause you a little bit of uh, concern, particularly when you are um, you know, in fairly bright conditions. The uh, brightness there of the screen isn't particularly bright, so let's see if we can turn up the brightness there to maximum. There we go, maximum brightness, that's a little bit, bit better. And there we come back out there. So there's our sort of main screen. Uh, we've got Google uh, search with the voice search there. Gmail, Play Store, Camera and Maps. Uh, and then down the bottom, phone, email, launcher, uh, messages. And uh, and in the browser there, as you can see, if we go into launcher, we can see what we've got. So we've got Bluetooth proximity. Uh, so a lot of cat applications there as well. There's a parts store for cat um Equipment, that's uh, um, bits and pieces there, play music and wireless device settings. Um, we will just go into uh, settings and Wi Fi and connect to the Wi Fi network. Let's do that now. There we go, and we'll just let that connect. And into the, uh, let's take a look in. There we go, so that's pretty quick. Interesting that we can't see what we're typing. I'll go there. That's better. So there's a haptic feedback there. So let's go and take a look. It's loading pretty quickly using broadband and Wi-Fi. Don't forget. Uh, it hasn't laid that out particularly well. But we can tap, tap to zoom in and zoom out and go into landscape mode and back to portrait works pretty quickly. Uh, take a look at the camera. I mean, I think camera is going to be fairly, you know, it should be sent as fairly useful, 5 megapixel uh, autofocus camera. I think if you're going to use, going to be some that's sort of a, a workman or anything like that that's going to want to use the camera to send pictures to clients or your boss or stuff like that. So the camera is fairly important, I would say, to be honest with you. Uh, it seems to be kind of okay actually. Take a quick snap there. Color reproduction is good. Uh, let's take a look. So that's done a reasonably good job actually. The camera, uh, let's say five megapixel. So that's quite good. We'll take a look at that in a bit more detail when we come to do our review. Uh, we'll take a look at the Play Store uh, because we want to go ahead and just download Quadrant just to give you an idea of what it hits benchmarking like. So we sign into an existing account. Okay, I'm just let that sign in. Here we go. There we go, search. Oops. Try that again. Quadrant. I'm going to do a little benchmark for you, just to get an idea of uh, performance-wise. It's a one gigahertz processor. It's a single core, uh, so well, it should be. Well, I think it should be reasonable. Uh, we've got 512 meg of RAM in there as well. Of course, have GPS as well. Now let's take a look and run a quick benchmark for you. So here we go. Run a full benchmark.
And say so it's taking a little while to get through the CPU test, but let's say it's a one gigahertz single core CPU. So it'll take a little while to run through all the tests. Um, but bear in mind this is just a is just a quick oh sorry, it is a one it isn't a single core, it's a dual core. My mistake. Just correct it by let me just correct that. One gigahertz dual core. Uh, just check the specification, so there we go. Just give us a rough idea of what uh, our benchmark is. Not the only way of uh, really testing a device, but gives us an indication. There we go, let's see what our results are. As you can see, we're about down here. So compared to the HTC One X Transformer and the Motorola Atrix, uh, the, the score is 2,823. I mean, it's not too terrible, to be quite honest with you. Uh, but many of the other devices that uh, are on the market at the moment are around the sort of five, 6,000 mark in terms of benchmark. But uh, there we go, just gives us a rough idea of what's going on. Um, I think we'll leave it there for now on the uh, CAT B15. Just a quick look and unboxing for you of the device. There are a number of videos on the web um, of these devices being submerged um, for uh, 30 minutes and just to prove that they will actually uh, survive being submerged underwater. I'm not going to do that, but um, if you want to see that in action, just uh, there's quite a few videos on the web. So that's a quick uh, quick video of the Cat B15 sent to us um, from the guys over at Clove Technology at clove.co.uk. Thanks to them for uh, letting us do a quick unboxing and review of Cat B15. If you want to follow us on Twitter, it's twitter.com slash tracyandmatt or facebook.com slash tracyandmatt.co.uk. I'll be back soon with some more videos and reviews on tracyandmatt.co.uk. But for now, thanks for watching.